this is a terminal uh, to one of our uh, internal um, uh, mainframe applications. And what I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to kind of do a small workflow here. So I want to go with my username and my, my password here and my application and here my password. And I can just press one to do some view. And basically this is my uh, scenario that I want to emulate. That's great. Now that's my application and I want to test it. Let's create a functional test. So with the JMeter plugin, uh, that you can see it here. And actually I think we just did an upgrade. Uh, if you don't have it, you'll find it on the install plugins again, or you can just go uh, and and just download it directly from our GitHub. Um, the plugin is uh, cons uh, constructed from two elements. One is the config element, very similar to HTTP request defaults. It's basically describing the machine, the protocol that I wanna use, uh, based on the protocol, which type of te uh, terminal, okay? And uh, do I want to apply SSL or not? And if so, which version and a timer. That's it. From here, you have the sample. You can add, by the way, the sample by doing sample and you'll see the RT sample somewhere here. Here we go, the BZM RT sample. And when you add the sample, it looks like this. First thing is you have three actions. First is to connect. Third one is to disconnect, pretty obvious. Um, by the way, if you want to do it, we will automatically connect, but sometimes you want to actually measure the connect time. And the third one is send keys. This is very similar to, you know, normal user navigation. It basically tells you go to row X, column Y, and do that, uh, send those keys. Uh, we have some attention keys here. And the idea is that this obeys the entire JMeter rules. So, for example, here you can see I'm putting a response session, which actually validates that I'm going to have this text there. And I can also use regular expressions here, or JSON path extractor if I need to, or something like that, uh, perform timers, etc. And remember that I showed you this terminal? So you can see here I'm at uh, 518. I can just go here, do 518, and send whatever I want here. Uh, and with that kind of construct my test on a functional level, make sure that everything works, okay? Those are actually, this is a wait for, and it's a very smart type of timer. Sometimes you want to make sure that, um, let's say I'm doing an LS command, and I want to make sure that the screen is silent for at least one second. So I can tell my JMeter, hey, do not proceed to the next uh, operation until the screen is silent for one second. And with that, let's just run the test. Anybody, I can just download JMeter, download the script and run it locally. And you can see that oh, something bad happened and uh, the login was, uh, was supposed to, do, to be able to log in, but I got rejected because I'm already connected to that machine with this terminal. So it's an instant feed then. Like I know something happened, it's right now it's due to a, uh, a justified reason. So let's just close that. Uh, but if something with my code was bad, I could just, just see that in front of me and just do that. So great, let's fix the problem. I disconnected from that server, run that again. For example, here you can see the same terminal that you actually saw before, just in a, a white background, another black one, uh, minus all the, uh, all the, all the uh, uh, coloring. I can actually see the requests like uh, here I asked to just go and send a PDF command and that's what I got after I've sent the PDF command and I selected view and I can see whatever happens on my uh, application and I disconnect and back to the home page. So let me show you what happens in blaze meter. So this for example is a test in blaze meter and I've uploaded our uh, jars here and that's my GMX, same GMX that I showed you before. And this is a report I've already ran. And you can see that the, those are the requests just as we saw them in JMeter locally. And not only that, I can actually go and see the, the actual text and response that I got 
from the mainframe. So if one of these requests actually failed, not only I know why it failed, I will see the request and I will also see the response that got if it was due to an issue or an assertion, something like that. And you can see that the assertion passed. Now, the beauty of it is that the same test can actually be transformed into a performance test. So what I just did, I took my functional test. I, I can add a CSV to it. So I'll have multiple username and passwords and I can just run it with any amount of virtual users that I want for any amount of duration. You can actually see what happened during the performance test. Uh, look at the stats of each label figure out do we had any errors what was the 95 percentile of it in second and milliseconds of course error percentages like oh i have a problem with select workspace and also with uh, view so probably i should dig in into that probably they're correlating with send pdf command so we can uh, uh, understand that and also from a timeline perspective i can actually dig in and see exactly when errors started popping up we can see that once we get to the maximum load we started getting errors and we see them go every couple of one. Maybe we have, we have a queuing mechanism that is wrong and the response time is correlating exactly with the errors. It's great. And also, of course, the throughput. Um, if I want to share this report with somebody, either I invite them to my workspace or I can just, let's say it's a contractor. All I need to do is just take that, send it to somebody and let me open incognito mode. We can both collaborate on that test. The only difference is they don't have access to my scripts, my private data, so they can see the errors, but they can't actually get the script. Let's actually talk of how to automate that part. So uh, we're using Jenkins, but you can use it uh, with any other CI tool or even a CD tool. And I created a couple of uh, two builds but what I want to show you is how we integrate that. So in order to integrate the tests, we're using Torus, which is our open source initiative. Uh, Torus uh, actually stands for uh, test automation uh, run smoothly, but uh, Torus is an open source that allows you to just take tests and wrap them with a YAML file to describe how you want to run the test. And from the command line, just run those tests. So in order to integrate it into Jenkins, all I had to do is go here and add a build and then do PZT, let's take that, and run it from my command line. But now what's happening is that Torus is actually running that JMX locally on my end. Super cool, huh? I like this, the dashboard and everything. Once that's running, all I need to do is just take the command line, put it here, and with that, I just integrated it into my pipeline. So what happens is that I will go back here and just fire up that build. And you can see here that I fired up those builds many times. That build is actually going to launch a test. Uh, of course, take my code, compile it, build it, run, and launch a test at BlazeMeter which is the test that I've showed you right now. And the reason you have 21 here is just because we're keeping the same test, but we're adding the build number to that. So we'll be able to look at the trends and figure out what happened with our KPIs. We can see what happens with our hits per second here, what happened with our error percentage, with our average response time across uh, the test and with multiple builds. So if we have an issue with that specific build, for example, I can just either click here and it will move me directly to the build that had all the issues, build number 18. I can do it from here, or I can go back here and see, oh, I have a couple of builds and build 18 just failed. Let's go into build 18. Look at the console output and get everything that I need from here. I can see the test. I can go, oh, something happened with my code. No problem, let's just go click here and it will redirect me to the test that that bill actually ran. So to conclude, uh, what we just did is uh, we had one JMeter script with an RT plugin. We had one Jenkins and one Torus. What we did is created 
uh, a scenario, a functional scenario that tests one of the CICS um, screens. And uh, we validated the reports for me locally. And then I just fired up to uh, BlazeMeter on a functional test. And it worked for me on BlazeMeter as a functional. I created a performance test based on that script. I ran that performance test. And at the end, what I did, I went to my Jenkins build. I integrated it into the Jenkins build. So now every time I'm going to build that application again, I'm going to run a test. Jenkins is just one example. You can use whatever you use for CD, like for example, Atomic, uh, to just, uh, every time you do a deploy, just run that command line and it will fire up the test to make sure that the environment is ready, it's performing well, there are no issues there, warm up the cache and do that. Uh, you, you can have it as part of a CI, you can have a developer spin up that test. Uh, once the test, uh, once the test is completed or while the test is running, you can share the report with your colleagues. Uh, and with that, you just get, uh, go here, uh, you get a, pl a platform that basically allows you to uh, run tests, collaborate with people and scale to the needs that you want in order to ensure that the code that you're going to deliver in a high throughput will be with the quality that you intended to.